Hello and welcome to the solution video of the Code 100 Scavenger Hunt Challenge. In this challenge, we gave you a website with lots of hidden messages in them. So let's find them together, shall we? The first clue was that part one is hidden in plain sight. What that means normally is that it's just the same background and foreground color. So if you use Command A to highlight the whole page, you get the first part. Part one, hi, my name is Werner Brandes. So we can copy that one here and copy it over to our code 100. And then we get the first part. The second part is in the source of the page. But now normally what people do is actually go to the developer tools and look at the source of the page in this elements tool. The problem is though, there is nothing here. The clue is that it's in the source of the page and not this here. This here is a representation of the DOM after CSS and JavaScript messed with it. The source of the page is something you still get by using view source in your browser. So instead of command shift I, we do command shift U and then you can see here part two, my voice is my passport. We take this one over as well and copy it over to our, code one, uh, to our VS code. And then we got my voice is my passport. Part three needs you to focus on this. So when we click on this, it should do something, but it doesn't. What we really need to do is focus on it with the keyboard. And that one says part three, verify me. So we can copy and paste that one as well or we can type it in, part three, verify me. This actually uses a CSS feature you might not know yet. There's actually focus visible is a, uh, is a CSS feature that only shows when something has been accessed with a keyboard or with a touch device rather than the mouse and just clicked on it. This is a very good way to actually make sure that your applications are keyboard accessible and a way to actually not annoy other people with like big, big borders and things and buttons that they don't like. But anyways, what does that actually mean that, um, hi, my name is Werner Brandes, my voice is my passport and verify me. It's actually from the best hacker movie I know, which is called Sneakers. And that's a 1992 film where a lot of people actually do, uh, are trying to hack a system and it's very close to what it would be in real life. There's a lot of social engineering in there. There's a lot of like finding things out. And that sentence that, hi, my name is Werner Brandis, my voice is my passport, verify me, was a voice, uh, was a voice message that you have to talk into a door to get opened. So the hackers had to collect that from different sources and asking people about it. If you haven't seen that movie yet, it's actually one of the best hacker movies I know. And parts of it were filmed in the building that I worked in when I was in San Francisco in Mozilla, which is now the Google office as well. So Sneakers, great hacker film. If you actually want to watch one that is not just sci-fi, but actually shows you how things are done. There is a, a blind hacker in there, a blind phone freaker, which is really, really cool character and really, really interesting to see what they're doing there. But let's move on. Part four needs to be heard. So if we take a look at the source code here, we find that there's an audio element in here. So the audio element goes to sound.mp3. You can also use the network tool and actually load that one and see if the mp3 shows up there, but it might actually not because it's not activated yet. So you go back to the source and the easiest way to get to listen to that thing is basically just add a controls attribute here. And once you added that, it's actually playable and you can hear me say, part four. I hacked the Gibson. Part four, I hacked the Gibson. Part four, I hacked the Gibson. This of course is a reference to the movie hackers and also has been a glib remark on forums and news uh, and newsletters and, and like news groups when people ask you to hack something and how good of a hacker you are. People are saying like, okay, I'm, uh, I hacked the Gibson. This is Hackers the Movie from 1995. <laughs> not as good, it, it's, it's a cult movie, but it's not quite how hacking really worked and how these things were actually done. But it's fun to see and it's actually kind of cringy to see what the style of the time was as well back then. Anyways, moving on. Part five is stored locally. This one means local storage. So we can either go to the apps pane here or the memory pane. No, the apps section, where is it? Sources, no, application. And then we can go to local storage here and we can take a look what's been, what's been sorted here. Part five, David, computers don't call people. So we can put that over. Part five, 
David Computers Don't Call People. This, of course, is from another movie, and this is from one of my favorites ever, which is War Games. Uh, it's kind of a Disney-ish movie, but it's actually a really good hacking movie as well. Phone freaking and uh, uh, also telephone card hacking. It's a really interesting one to see. Interestingly enough, the Professor Falcon in that movie was actually written for, uh, for uh, uh, John Lennon, but he couldn't make it because he was dead. So that was sad. But you can see actually when you watch the movie right now, how John Lennon would have been perfect for that role. Really good movie as well, and the uh, and part five of our solution here. David, computers don't call people. Yours just did is the answer for that because the Whopper computer calls them and wants to keep playing the game that they started. You can also, of course, you don't have to go to the application pane. You can go to the console and just type local storage, and then actually finds that David don't computers don't call people here as well. Local storage is very open, so it's not a good idea to actually put anything secret in there. Part six is in the logo. So this one is another one where it's not visible. So I guess when we do an analysis, uh, when, when we select this here, you can see there's a clip path. So if we take rid of that clip path, you can see part six is misdirection. Another way of doing that would have been just to right click and open the image in new tab. And then you would see that part six misdirection as well. Part six, misdirection. And part seven, let's see what that one is. So if you go back to the page right now, it says part seven is really in the logo. So it could be that it's like black darker pixels on the other one. But what I've done here is actually more annoying because you can't do it in the developer tools. Because if you go to the sources tab, for example, and you look at images, it actually does a preview of the image. What we need to do is actually look at the image as a binary file because I put the last message inside the EXIF data of that image. The easiest way to do that is to just save it and then go to, uh, go to uh, Explorer or go to uh, Finder in this case and do a command I. And then you can see here that there is a message part seven, what the eyes see and the ears hear, the mind believes. So this one is the last one. And this one is a quote from Houdini from part six and part seven together. And it's been taken from the movie Swordfish, which uh, I guess is the bottom of the barrel when it comes to hacking movies, but it was quite a fun romp to watch anyways. So these are the whole messages that we have. You could also go to the terminal and actually uh, use curl to read the image. And that one would give you all that, that messages here as well. But this is what we've done to hide all these messages inside this page. And this is how the scavenger hunt ends. I hope you found it. We picked a winner. So hope to see you in the next Code 100 challenge.